you've had a long, durable recovery, which is great because the further away you get from an episode of depression, the lower the probability is that it would come back. Right, yeah, I remember you saying that to me and it's a, such a relief and such good news. Yeah, you have, let's say, a vulnerability for depressive symptoms that could turn into an episode of depression. It's rare that it just sort of happens autonomously as if, you know, out of the blue. During this recovery is when, when I lost my dog last, last summer and I didn't, I didn't wait until it got to be a crisis before I came to, to see you. I, That's I right, came we did, almost, we did come. Almost right. straight away to, to say how to handle this because, it, I, because I noticed that it was, it was veering from grief into me blaming myself, which is a depressive symptom. Yes. When that started to, to become a component, that's when I, I called you and, and we met but soon it's, thereafter. Yeah, it's, it's those things, those inevitable, um, those inevitable tragedies in life. Right, and so what you're worried about is, since it's inevitable that something stressful or sad or there's a loss is always gonna be present in life, you can't predict when it happens, what do you do to protect yourself? And, you know, most stresses won't trigger depression. They'll trigger things like sadness. But you know the difference between, you know, a normal stress reaction, normal sadness, and depression, which is, as you say, one of them is when you start blaming yourself. And we can be aggressive in preventing it. So the sooner you actually come in and, you know, get treated, the faster the response. Right, yeah. And we will be in contact. I mean, you feel like it's moving more than just feeling sad and feeling anxious. We will be more aggressive and do something and head it off at the pass. So, you know, you're, That's not, helpful. Yes. you're not alone. It's very scary, but you're definitely not alone.